We have a new firmware for the Sensil Morph, and it introduces some fixes for some bugs, as well as some improvements in two key areas in pitch, rounding, and velocity handling. I'm going to go in those last two in detail because they require some, some configuration and some understanding about how they integrate. So without further ado, I'm going to start with the pitch rounding. Pitch rounding means that uh, when you do a pitch bend and MPE, here I have the old firmware, uh, when you pitch bend from one note to another, the morph looks at uh, distance and then tries to round to the nearest semitone. It doesn't always get it right, though, because of the different distances on different pads. And so there were some accommodations and fudges. Uh, there's particularly the gravity mode, which works well to sort of pull it into a particular semitone. That one worked, but it's very easy to overshoot it. So it is actually pitch bending and rounding to this semitone. So what we did is we introduced sort of a new mode uh, or revised an existing mode that probably isn't used very much, and that's the jump mode. So in our new firmware, we can take a look at that. Uh, so what you do in the Sensil app is you select your morph, and in this case, we have the new firmware 295. Uh, if you have not updated, you'll get a red update firmware notification in the Sensil app right here. Just press it, it'll take care of business, and then you'll be good to go. So what we do to access this new pitch rounding, uh, we'll go to the morph settings and select jump mode and send settings to morph. And now it's going to uh, program that, so then it's going to be always set that way for all your overlays. We'll also want to take a look at how we have the pitch bend set up for MPE. In this case, the pitch bend is set for 460 millimeters, and that means you get a full range of pitch bend uh, from the center to the edges. So that gives you, if you have 48 semitones set up, it'll give you that full range. And that is actually pretty important because when you look at your software, there's different uh, possibilities for setting your pitch bend range, and you'll want that to set to 48 for everything to work. So let's take a listen to what this sounds like. Uh, if I'm just gonna pitch bend one note, it now lands on that note correctly. And similarly, even though these are different size, we can land on the black note. And it'll go up that semitone. So you can actually do this, of course, per finger. Uh, and then we can morph through different chords. And then everything just stays in tune. Now, what's really cool about this is that when you introduce something like a grid or you have keys above other keys, uh, you can actually pitch bend up. Normally, pitch bend in MPE is just left to right, so you can get your vibrato. And, of course, you can go from left to right. This is set up for a, a full 12 steps from C to B left to right, and then it goes up an octave as you go up the columns. Now let's try going up. Now we have a limitation here in that we are only set to uh, pitch so many octaves, so... Once we get past that fourth octave, we can't pitch bend anymore. But we can, of course, still do our left to right as well as our vertical. So that introduces some really interesting ideas about how you might play an electronic instrument. This is useful for sort of pseudo-realistic things where you want to um, implement maybe a violin or something like that, but it's also cool for, electrical, for electric instruments where you can just kind of mess around. So quickly, it gets a little bit out of control and very wild. So that is the uh, jump setting. What we'll want to do is also take a look at how we have our uh, pitch, round, pitch bending set up in our software. So this is set for a spacing of 460 millimeters, which is twice the length of a morph. This is 230 millimeters from here to here. 
Uh, if we go to our software, I'm showing this in Ableton Live, just using the wavetable, uh, we'll want to go to the MPE section of this and make sure that note pitch bend is set to 48 semitones, then it'll work. If we set it to something like uh, 24, then our pitches will not quite work out. It's only half the amount. And now it lands on the right pitch. So that's for Wavetable. This sets, this is setting is going to be a little bit different for different software. If we look at another instrument like Continua, we'll need to go to our settings and make sure MPE is on and pitch bend override is active. And that our override range is 48 for our 460 millimeter spacing. Now it's going to work as we expect from semitone to semitone. And of course up. And this is really gonna vary from software to software. In Equator, uh, again, we'll find it in Equator settings, which is here in the MIDI settings. We'll set our note pitch bend to 48. This will play the instrument correctly. So depending on the software, you'll have to configure it, but make sure it is correct. And this is also something to pay attention to in the Sensel app. If you're doing something, for example, on the custom overlays, you'll want to make sure that your settings are uh, set up so that the uh, pitch bend is at 460 millimeters. The next thing I wanted to cover is the velocity and uh, velocity range. Now this actually really quite impacts how the instrument responds to your touch. And a lot of people out there are quite used to how their morph responds. Um, the issue generally is that it's hard to get a really low velocity on the current firmware. So uh, when we take a look at, for example, we can look at this data in a uh, sampler in live. We go ahead and select the zone. We open up the velocity and we start tapping. And even the lightest touches, it's hard to get below uh, 30 or 24 uh, minimum velocity. So what we did is we implemented a new scaling, uh, but we kind of uh, made it a little bit uh, something that you had to set up uh, because otherwise, again, it would change how your instrument felt. So what you want to do is select your overlay and select a key. We can do a comparison here by just setting one key. And what we do is we set the threshold which is normally used to set sort of a minimum action on the keyboard or whatever pad you're using. Uh, and we're gonna set that to 10. And that introduces a threshold of three, but with the new velocity scaling. So I'll go ahead and send this map to morph and we can compare the touches on these two keys. And we can look at that data in uh, Ableton Live. We can see that we can now get velocities in the lower range by tapping lightly. Those same taps on a regular key are just a little bit higher in the velocity range. If you want to switch all your keys, which I imagine you would want to do, an easy way to do that is using contr uh, Control or Command A to select all, uh, and then hold down your Command or Control key on your Mac or Windows, and uh, then just start clicking on things that are not actual playable keys. So in this case, it's all the function keys. And once those are all deselected, we can then select uh, all of our play playable keys are selected, and then we can set the threshold to 10, send map to morph, and now all of our keys are set to use the new velocity range scaling. The reason we did that again is because we don't want to change how people's expectations and their practice already exists with the morph. And we also would like to get feedback on how this works for people, uh, if they find it satisfying or if maybe it needs more adjustment. We know this has been a long time coming and we're really happy that we can finally bring this out to you. We look forward to your feedback and we look forward to you bringing more improvements to the Sensil Morph. Be sure to subscribe to our channel so you can get the latest updates and tutorials and just cool videos of things happening with the Morph.